Okay, I just started a uh, one hour test from the little Vivor pump to see uh, how many microns it'll pull in a half an hour. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and, uh, no, an hour. I'm going to do a half hour test and I'm going to do an hour test. So we'll see what it does in, in an hour. Okay, we're not going to watch the whole thing. I just wanted to see it get started. And then we're going to do the half hour first. And then do a second half hour to see. Because, you know, if you use a regular analog gauge set like this, it'll show minus 30. But it shows that right away. Because we're already at minus 29, just standard atmospheric pressure. So having to go down to minus 30 isn't really all that damn helpful. It doesn't tell you anything. Uh, but here, with a micron gauge, it's the same exact pump you use for the analog gauge. And so it's same hose, same pump, everything. So now we're actually be able to tell. Now, but I'm, I have a nice tight system, so we're going to see what it does with, it, with a nice tight system. Do you have one? We don't know. And so that's why you need a micron gauge to find out if you have a nice tight system. But if you have this crummy little pump, it's just your basic, you know, hundred dollar pump kit from Amazon, then you'll be able to do the same testing procedures. You'll know if you happen to have this thing, it won't tell you anything. It'll just show minus 30, big whoop. can tell you anything. But now, if you had a tight system, you'd be able to see it get down. Because you want to have it go below 500 microns and then hold below my 500 microns for your DK test. But anyway, I'll show you how far this thing gets down in a half an hour. And then, theoretically, if you do not wind up getting a micron gauge and you rely upon these... Anyway, then you'll know theoretically you can get below 500 microns and hold it. Okay, good job. Okay, it's been a half an hour, and yes, it is below 500 microns, but not a, not a ton. But it may hold right there, but I would not stop at a half an hour. We know that these machines will pull down now. We don't know how much more, but we're going to go ahead and give it another half an hour to find out. So we got a half hour in. We got to 435 microns, and you know if you have a tight system, that's what yours will be too. Uh, this is a really small pump, and I'll give you the details of the pump in a minute as soon as we get done with the next half an hour. But we're going to do a half hour more, so we'll make a full hour, and then we'll get you a, we'll get you the reading out for that to let you know if you get this system what you can expect if you also have a tight system. Okay. Okay. So in a half an hour, it's been a half an hour now. It's been a full hour. Uh, we've been able to get down um, 18 more points. Okay, so 18 more microns down in a half an hour. So it, it did the most work in their first half hour. We got down 18 more points in the second half hour. And now we're going to find out if it'll actually hold. Uh, the reason you do this, you got to move this a couple times because there's air trapped in the valve. So if you're using a valve port removal tool, you want to do that a couple times during the test to make sure it gets rid of that air, because if not, as soon as you turn it on, as soon as you go to valve it off to check on your 10-minute uh, DK test, it will screw up your DK test completely, so as you just saw. It was a big number. And this thing is so slow, this pump's so small, it takes a while to get back to where it was. It was 419, and just by allowing that little bit of air that was trapped in there, it, ju it jumped right up to 480 or whatever. So anyway, it's got to get back to 419 before I can turn it off again and do and try our DK test. So our DK test is 10 minutes long. We want to see if it decays at all. It's D-E-C-A-Y. We want to see if it'll decay. So we have to now wait, wait for it to get back to 419. Then I will turn it off and start our 10 minute DK test. And it was good for me to hit that uh, valve and show you that, that on that valve, it's just a little T-valve, you know, it just opens and closes this whole thing. So it allows it to go through or stops it from going through. Just on that little valve there, it was enough to go from 419 to 480. Okay, so that's a lot of microns. The point, the point I'm making is, you can imagine this thing boiling out any non-condensables from the system. That's what the vacuum's all about. It's literally boiling out uh, things like moisture or whatever, non-condensables that will ruin the PoE oil. Okay, and turn it into acid. 
and then all your winding will be bathed in acid if you didn't get it all out of there. So super important to have a good vacuum and a good uh, micron level. So the point is you can see how fast it went up from 419 to 480 or whatever it was. And the point being is that little tiny bit of air that was in there. When I opened it, think about it. When I did, this is vacuuming, okay? This is vacuuming. And it's under vacuum pressure right now. So when I opened it, it shouldn't have even gone up. You understand that concept of that? If the valve's right here and I turn it like this, it should just go and suck right into a vacuum. Like you think of a vacuum, if it was a hose on a vacuum for a shop vac or something. When I moved this thing, it would just go down the hole and go into the vacuum. And this thing here would be no, none the wiser. Okay, but instead that's not the case. That's how little tiny bit of moisture and non condensables could ruin a uh, good system. That's how small it is. Whatever little tiny bit was trapped on that valve, which was not a big giant drop, think of little air bubbles, little tiny, little tiny, tiny particles. That's how much it went off. That's why it's super important to get a micron gauge because that's the only thing that shows that kind of infinitesimal problems. And you want all of them gone because it will literally turn your POE oil into acid. And it will just completely coat in acid and start eating away all your windings and such. All right. I'm done. I'm, at four, I'm back at 420, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, valve it off, and then we're going to see what it does in 10 minutes. Turn it off, and we'll give it 10 minutes. It's now valved off. So if you have the valve core removal tool, you're, you're valved off right here, and uh, it's now reading whatever it is reading, you know. So what we're going to do is wait, let it go 10 minutes and see if it holds at a good vacuum. It, should, it can't go over 500, and it already started at 420. So it only gives us 80 to play with. All right, so that's after an hour. I don't know if we get more out of it if we left it on for longer, but uh, maybe, maybe not. That'll be a different test, different day. But anyway, we're at 427, and it seems to be holding there, so that's not terrible. We we, we did a good vacuum, per se, and, and yeah, so we're going to wait 10 minutes, and I'll bring you back. Okay, I did a 20-minute test, uh, DK test, and it held. So we're under 500 microns, and we are allowed to... I'll release the refrigerant to the system. It held. So all the line set has been um, cleaned out of incondensables. Uh, and so it should be God, non condensables. I don't know why is it incondensables. The non condensables uh, have been boiled out. And so it held. Okay. So that worked out good. 20 minutes have gone by and it's perfect. So uh, again, you know, it's a little girl pump and it, it worked. So uh, that's your answer. You can use it, but go longer. Go an hour and then do a 20-minute DK test, and uh, that's it. That'll be, you know, rock solid. I would hope you get a micron gauge after all this instruction so you can actually see your unit because if I had a crappy unit, it would not hold. My, my unit just has to be dry. It happens to be dry and tight. As I said before, this is my testing uh, one thing inside my, one of my sheds. And I just have a testing system set up. And uh, so I do all my tests and perform all my tests right here. So I happen to know it's dry and tight. And uh, so the point is, you, you, you're good to go. Uh, we're, we're ready.